Pimin. While he was still young, Abba Pimin went one day to an old man to ask him about three thoughts. Having reached the old man, he forgot one of the three and went back to his cell. But as he was stretching out his hand to turn the key, he remembered the thought which he had forgotten, and, leaving the key, he returned to the old man. The old man said to him, You come quickly, brother. He told him, At the moment when I was putting out my hand to grasp the key, I remembered the thought which I was trying to find. So I did not open the door, but have retraced my steps. Now the length of the way was very great, and the old man said to him, Pimin, shepherd of the flock, your name will be known throughout Egypt. Once Pisios, the brother of Abba Pimin, made friends with someone outside his cell. Now Abba Pimin did not want that. So he got up and fled to Abba Amonas and said to him, Pisios, my brother, holds converse with someone, so I have no peace. Abba Amonas said to him, Pimin, are you still alive? Go, sit down in your cell, engrave it on your heart that you have been in the tomb for one year already. One day the priests of the district came to the monasteries where Abba Pimin was. Abba Anub came and said to him, Let us invite the priests in today. But he stood for a long time without giving him any reply, and, quite offended, Abba Anub went away. Those who were sitting beside Pimin said to him, Abba, why didn't you answer him? Abba Pimin said to them, It is not my business, for I am dead, and a dead man does not speak. Before Abba Pimin's group came there, there was an old man in Egypt who enjoyed considerable fame and repute. But when Abba Pimin's group went up to Skites, men left the old man to go see Abba Pimin. Abba Pimin was grieved at this and said to his disciples, What is to be done about this great old man? For men grieve him by leaving him and coming to us who are nothing. What shall we do then to comfort this old man? He said to them, Make ready a little food, and take a skin of wine, and let us go to see him and eat with him, and so we shall be able to comfort him. So they put together some food and went. When they knocked at the door, the old man's disciple answered, saying, Who are you? They responded, Tell the Abba it is Pimin who desires to be blessed by him. The disciple reported this, and the old man sent him to say, Go away, I have no time. But in spite of the heat, they persevered, saying, We shall not go away till we have been allowed to meet the old man. Seeing their humility and patience, the old man was filled with compunction and opened the door to them. Then they went in and ate with him. During the meal he said, Truly, not only what I have heard about you is true, but I see that your works are a hundredfold greater. And from that day he became their friend. One day the magistrate of that district wanted to see Abba Pimin, but the old man did not want to see him. So he seized his sister's son and threw him into prison, under the pretext that he was a criminal, saying, If the old man comes to intercede for him, I will let him go. Then his sister came to weep at Pimin's door, but he gave her no answer. Then she reproached him in these words, saying, Heart of stone, have pity on me, for he is my only son. But he only said to her, Pimin has not brought forth any sons. At that she went away. When he heard this, the magistrate sent Pimin this message, If you only ask me by a word, I will let him go. The old man replied, Judge him according to the law. If he is worthy of death, put him to death. If not, do what you choose. One day a brother sinned in a monastery. Now there was an anchorite in the district, who had not gone out for a long time. The abb of the monastery went to see him, and to give him the news that the brother had sinned. The anchorite said, Drive him away. So the brother left the monastery, and he went into a cave and wept there. Now it happened that some brothers were going to see Abba Pimin, 
and they heard him weeping. They entered, found him in great misery, and invited him to go see the old man. But he refused, saying, I am going to die here. So when they reached Abba Pimin's cell, they told him about the brother. And he exhorted them, and he sent them away, saying, Say to him, Abba Pimin sends for you. Then the brother came. Seeing he was in such distress, Abba Pimin stood up, embraced him, and was kind to him, and invited him to eat. Then he sent one of the brethren to the anchorite, saying, For many years I have desired to see you, having heard of you. But because of your lethargy, we have not yet met. Now, however, if God wills it, and you have the time, give yourself the trouble of coming here, and we will see one another. The old man had never left his cell, but when he heard this, he said, If God had not inspired the old man, he would not have sent someone to summon me. So he got up and went to see Abba Pimin. They embraced one another with joy and sat down. Abba Pimin said to him, Two men dwelt in one place, and someone belonging to each of them died. The first one, leaving his own dead, went to weep over the others. Hearing these words, the anchorite was filled with compunction, and he remembered what he had done, and said, Pimin, you have gone up to heaven, and I have gone down to the earth. Many old men came to see Abba Pimin, and one day it happened that a member of Abba Pimin's family came, who had a child whose face, through the power of the devil, was turned backwards. The father, seeing the number of fathers present, took the child and sat down outside the monastery, weeping. Now it happened that one of the old men came out, and seeing him, asked him, Man, why are you weeping? He replied, I am related to Abba Pimin, and see the misfortune which has overtaken my child. Though I want to bring him to the old man, we are afraid he does not want to see us. Each time he hears I am here, he has me driven away. But since you are with him, I have dared to come. If you will, Father, have pity on me. Take the child inside and pray for him. So the old man took the child, went inside, and behaved with good sense. He did not immediately present him to Abba Pimin, but began with the lesser brethren, and said, Make the sign of the cross over this little child. Having him signed by all in turn, he presented him at last to Abba Pimin. Abba Pimin did not want to make the sign of the cross over him, but the others urged him, saying, Do as everyone else has done. So, groaning, he stood up and prayed, saying, God, heal your creature, that he be not ruled by the enemy. When he had signed him, the child was immediately healed, and given back whole to his father. A brother from Abba Piman's neighborhood left to go to another country one day. There he met an anchorite. The latter was very charitable, and many came to see him. The brother told him about Abba Pimin. When he heard of his virtue, the anchorite wanted to see him. Some time afterwards, when the brother had returned to Egypt, the anchorite went there to see the brother who had formerly paid him a visit. He had told him where he lived. When he saw him, the brother was astonished and very pleased. The anchorite said to him, Please, will you be so kind as to take me to Abba Pimin? So he brought him to the old man and presented him, saying, This is a great man, full of charity, who is held in high estimation in his district. I have spoken to him about you, and he has come because he wants to see you. So Abba Pimin received him with joy. They greeted one another and sat down. The visitor began to speak of the scriptures, of spiritual and of heavenly things. But Abba Pimin turned his face away and answered nothing. Seeing that he did not speak to him, the other went away deeply grieved and said to the brother who had brought him, I have made this long journey in vain, for I have come to see the old man and he does not wish to speak to me. Then the brother went inside to Abba Pimin and said to him, Abba, this great man who has so a great reputation in his own country has come here because of you. Why did you not speak to him? 
The old man said, He is great, and speaks of heavenly things, and I am lowly, and speak of earthly things. If he had spoken of the passions of the soul, I should have replied, But he speaks to me of spiritual things, and I know nothing about that. Then the brother came out and said to the visitor, The old man does not readily speak of the scriptures, but if anyone consults him about the passions of the soul, he replies. Filled with compunction, the visitor returned to the old man and said to him, What should I do, Abba? For the passions of the soul master me. The old man turned towards him and replied joyfully, This time you come as you should. Now open your mouth concerning this, and I will fill it with good things. Greatly edified, the other said to him, Truly, this is the right way. He returned to his own country, giving thanks to God that he had been counted worthy to meet so great a saint. One day the chief magistrate of the district seized one of the men of Abba Pimin's village, and everyone came to beg the old man to go and have him released. He replied, Leave me for three days, and I will go. Abba Pimin prayed to the Lord in these words, Lord, do not give me this grace, otherwise they will never let me stay in this place. Then the old man went to intercede with the magistrate, who replied, Will you intercede for a brigand, Abba? The old man rejoiced that he had not been granted this grace. They said that one day Abba Pimin and his brethren were making ropes, and the work was delayed because they had nothing with which to buy flax. One of their friends told a friendly merchant about this. Now Abba Pimin did not want to receive anything from anyone because of the trouble it causes. But the merchant wanted to do something for the old man, so he pretended to need ropes, and brought a camel and took them away. When the brothers came to see Abba Pimin and learned what the merchant had done, they said, intending to praise him, Truly, Abba, he has taken them though he did not need them, so as to do us a service. Hearing that he had taken them without needing them, Abba Pimin said to the brother, Get up, hire a camel, and bring them back. And if you do not bring them back, Pimin will no longer live here with you. I do not want to do wrong to someone who does not need those ropes, lest he should suffer loss by it and take my reward from me. The brother went away with much labor and brought them back. Otherwise the old man would have gone away from them. When he saw the ropes, he rejoiced as though he had found a great treasure. A priest of Pelusia heard it said of some brethren that they often went to the city, took baths, and were careless in their behavior. He went to the Synaxis and took the habit away from them. Afterwards his heart was moved. He repented and went to see Abba Pimin, obsessed by his thoughts. He brought the monastic habits of the brother and told him all about it. The old man said to him, Don't you sometimes have something of the old Adam in you? The priest said, I have my share of the old Adam. The Abba said to him, Look, you are just like the brethren yourself. If you have even a little share of the old Adam, then you are subject to sin in the same way. So the priest went and called the brothers and asked their pardon, and he clothed them in the monastic habit again and let them go. A brother questioned Abba Pimin, saying, I have committed a great sin, and I want to do penance for three years. The old man said to him, That is a lot. The brother said, For one year? The old man said again, That is a lot. Those who were present said, For forty days. He said again, That is a lot. He added, I myself say that if a man repents with his whole heart, and does not intend to commit the sin any more, God will accept him after only three days. He also said, The distinctive mark of the monk is made clear through temptations. He also said, Just as the king's bodyguard stands always on guard at his side, so the soul should always be on guard against the demon of fornication. Abba Anub asked Abba Pimin about the impure thoughts which the heart of man brings forth and about vain desires. Abba Pimin said to him, 
Is the axe any use without someone to cut with it? If you do not make use of these thoughts, they will be ineffectual too. Abba Pimin also said, If Nabu Zardan, the head cook, had not come, the temple of the Lord would not have been burned. That is to say, if slackness and greed did not come into the soul, the spirit would not be overcome in combat with the enemy. It was said of Abba Pimin that if he was invited to eat against his will, he wept, but he went, so as not to refuse to obey his brother and cause him pain. Abba Pimin also said, Do not live in a place where you see that some are jealous of you, for you will not make progress. Some brothers told Abba Pimin of a brother who did not drink wine. He said, Wine is not for monks. Abba Isaiah questioned Abba Pimin on the subject of impure thoughts. Abba Pimin said to him, It is like having a chest full of clothes. If one leaves them in disorder, they are spoiled in the course of time. It is the same with thoughts. If we do not do anything about them, in time they are spoiled. That is to say, they disintegrate. Abba Joseph put the same question, and Abba Pimin said to him, If someone shuts a snake and a scorpion up in a bottle, in time they will be completely destroyed. So it is with evil thoughts. They are suggested by the demons. They disappear through patience. A brother came to see Abba Pimin and said to him, I sow my field and give away in charity what I reap from it. The old man said to him, That is good. And he departed with fervor and intensified his charity. Hearing this, Abba Anub said to Abba Pimin, Do you not fear God that you have spoken like that to the brother? The old man remained silent. Two days later, Abba Pimin saw the brother coming and in the presence of Abba Anub said to him, What did you ask me the other day? I was not attending. The brother said, I said that I sow my field and give away what I gain in charity. Abba Pimin said to him, I thought you were speaking of your brother who was in the world. If it is you who are doing this, it is not right for a monk. At these words the brother was saddened and said, I do not know any other work, and I cannot help sowing the fields. When he had gone away, Abba Anub made a prostration and said, Forgive me. Abba Pimin said, From the beginning, I too knew it was not the work of a monk, but I spoke as I did, adapting myself to his ideas, and so I gave him courage to increase his charity. Now he has gone away full of grief, and yet he will go on as before. Abba Pimin said, If a man has sinned and denies it, saying, I have not sinned, do not reprimand him, for that will discourage him. But say to him, Do not lose heart, brother, but be on guard in the future, and you will stir his soul to repentance. He also said, Experience is a good thing. It is that which tests a man. He also said, A man who teaches without doing what he teaches is like a spring which cleanses and gives drink to everyone, but it is not able to purify itself. Going into Egypt one day, Abba Pimin saw a woman who was sitting in a tomb and weeping bitterly. He said, If all the delights of the world were to come, they could not drive sorrow away from the soul of this woman. Even so, the monk would always have compunction in himself. He also said, A man may seem to be silent, but if his heart is condemning others, he is babbling ceaselessly. But there may be another who talks from morning till night, and yet he is truly silent. That is, he says nothing that is not profitable. A brother came to see Abba Pimin and said to him, Abba, I have many thoughts, and they put me in danger. The old man led him outside and said to him, Expand your chest and do not breathe in. He said, I cannot do that. The old man said to him, If you cannot do that, 
No more can you prevent thoughts from arising, but you can resist them. Abba Pimin said, If three men meet, of whom the first fully preserves interior peace, and the second gives thanks to God in illness, and the third serves with a pure mind, these three are doing the same work. He also said, It is written, As the heart longs for flowing streams, so longs my soul for thee, O God. For truly hearts in the desert devour many reptiles, and when their venom burns them, they try to come to the springs, to drink so as to assuage the venom's burning. It is the same for the monks. Sitting in the desert, they are burned by the venom of evil demons, and they long for Saturday and Sunday to come to be able to go to the springs of water, that is to say, the body and blood of the Lord, so as to be purified from the bitterness of the evil one. Abba Joseph asked Abba Pimin, How should one fast? Abba Pimin said to him, For my part, I think it is better that one should eat every day, but only a little, so as not to be satisfied. Abba Joseph said to him, When you were younger, did you not fast two days at a time, Abba? The old man said, Yes, even for three days, and four, and the whole week. The fathers tried all this out as they were able, and they found it preferable to eat every day, but just a small amount. They have left us this royal way, which is light. It was said of Abba Pimin that every time he prepared to go to the Synaxis, he sat alone and examined his thoughts for about an hour, and then he set off. A brother asked Abba Pimin, An inheritance has been left me. What ought I to do? The old man said to him, Go, come back in three days, and I will tell you. So he returned as it had been decided. Then the old man said, What shall I say to you, brother? If I tell you to give it to the church, they will make banquets with it. If I tell you to give it to your relations, you will not receive any profit from it. If I tell you to give it to the poor, you will not do it. Do as you like, it is none of my business. Another brother questioned him in these words. What does, see that none of you repays evil for evil, mean? The old man said to him, Passions work in four stages. First, in the heart. Secondly, in the face. Thirdly, in words. And fourthly, it is essential not to render evil for evil in deeds. If you can purify your heart, passion will not come into your expression. But if it comes into your face, take care not to speak. But if you do speak, cut the conversation short in case you render evil for evil. Abba Pimin said, Vigilance, self-knowledge, and discernment. These are the guides of the soul. He also said, to throw yourself before God, not to measure your progress, to leave behind all self-will, these are the instruments for the work of the soul. He also said, The victory over all the afflictions that befall you is to keep silence. He also said, All bodily comfort is an abomination to the Lord. He also said, Compunction has two sides. It is a good work and a good protection. He also said, If a thought about bodily needs overtakes you, put the matter right at once. And if it comes a second time, put it right again. But the third time, if it presents itself, do not pay any attention to it, for it is not being any use to you. He also said that a brother questioned Abba Adonias, saying, what does it mean to become nothing? The old man said, It means to place oneself beneath irrational beings and to know what they are without blame. He also said, If man remembered that it is written, By your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned, he would choose to remain silent. He also said, The beginning of evil is heedlessness. 
he also said that Abba Asidor, the priest of Scites, spoke to the people one day, saying, Brothers, is it not in order to endure affliction that we have come to this place? But now there is no affliction for us here, so I am getting my sheepskin ready to go where there is some affliction, and there I shall find peace. A brother said to Abba Pimin, If I see something, do you want me to tell you about it? The old man said to him, It is written, If one gives answer before he hears, it is folly and shame. If you are questioned, speak. If not, remain silent. A brother asked Abba Pimin, saying, Can a man put his trust in one single work? The old man said to him that Abba John the dwarf said, I would rather have a bit of all the virtues. The old man said that a brother asked Abba Pambo if it is good to praise one's neighbor, and that the old man said to him, It is better to be silent. Abba Pimin said, Even if a man were to make a new heaven and earth, he could not live free of care. He also said, As the breath which comes out of his nostrils, so does a man need humility and the fear of God. A brother asked Abba Pimin, What should I do? The old man said to him, When Abraham entered the promised land, he bought a sepulchre for himself, and by means of this tomb he inherited the land. The brother said to him, What is the tomb? The old man said, The place of tears and compunction. A brother said to Abba Pimin, If I give my brother a little bread or something else, the demons tarnish these gifts, saying it was only done to please men. The old man said to him, Even if it is to please men, we must give the brother what he needs. He told him the following parable. Two farmers lived in the same town. One of them sowed and reaped a small and poor crop, while the other, who did not even trouble to sow, reaped absolutely nothing. If a famine comes upon them, which of the two will find something to live on? The brother replied, The one who reaped the small poor crop. The old man said to him, So it is for us. We sow a little poor grain, so that we will not die of hunger. Abba Pimin said that Abba Amanas said, A man can spend his whole time carrying an axe without succeeding in cutting down the tree, while another, with experience of tree felling, brings the tree down with a few blows. He said that the axe is discernment. A brother asked Abba Pimin, How should a man behave? The old man said to him, Look at Daniel. No one found anything in him to complain about except for his prayers to the Lord his God. Abba Pimin said, The will of man is a brass wall between him and God and a stone of stumbling. When a man renounces it, he is also saying to himself, By my God, I can leap over the wall. If a man's will is in line with what is right, then he can really labor. He also said, As the old men were sitting at a meal one day, Abba Alonius came up to serve, and when they saw that, they praised him. But he answered absolutely nothing. So one of them said to him privately, Why don't you answer the old men who are complimenting you? Abba Alonius said to him, If I were to reply to them, I should be accepting their praises. He also said, Men speak to perfection, but they do precious little about it. Abba Pimin said, Just a smoke drives the bees away, and also takes the sweetness out of their work. So bodily ease drives the fear of God from the soul, and dissipates all its activity. A brother came to see Abba Pimin in the second week of Lent, and told him about his thoughts. He obtained peace, and said to him, I nearly did not come here today. The old man asked him why. The brother said, I said to myself, Perhaps he will not let me in because it is Lent. Abba Pimin said to him, We have not been taught to close the wooden door, but 
the door of our tongues. Abba Pimin said, You must flee from sensual things. Indeed, every time a man comes near to a struggle with sensuality, he is like a man standing on the edge of a very deep lake and the enemy easily throws him in whenever he likes. But if he lives far away from sensual things, he is like a man standing at a distance from the lake, so that even if the enemy draws him in in order to throw him to the bottom, God sends him help at the very moment he is drawing him away and doing him violence. He also said, Poverty, hardship, austerity and fasting... Such are the instruments of the solitary life. It is written, When these three men are together, Noah, Job, and Daniel, There am I, says the Lord. Noah represents poverty, Job, suffering, and Daniel, discernment. So, if these three works are found in a man, the Lord dwells in him. Abba Joseph said, While we were sitting with Abba Pimin, he mentioned Agathon as Abba, and we said to him, He is very young. Why do you call him Abba? Abba Pimin said, Because his speech makes him worthy to be called Abba. A brother came to Abba Pimin one day and said to him, What should I do, father? For I am tempted to fornication. I went to Abba Ibiston, and he said to me, You must not let it stay with you. Abba Pimin said to him, Abba Ibiston's deeds are in heaven with the angels, and he does not realize that you and I remain in fornication. If a monk controls his belly and his tongue, and if he lives like an exile, be confident he will not die. Abba Pimin said, Teach your mouth to say that which you have in your heart. A brother questioned Abba Pimin, saying, If I see my brother committing a sin, is it right to conceal it? The old man said to him, At the very moment when we hide our brother's fault, God hides our own. And at the moment when we reveal our brother's fault, God reveals ours too. He said that someone asked Abba Pisios, What should I do about my soul? because it is insensitive and does not fear God. He said to him, Go and join a man who fears God, and live near him. He will teach you too to fear God. He also said, If a monk can overcome two things, he can become free from the world. A brother asked him what these two things were, and he said, Bodily ease and vain glory. Abraham the disciple of Abba Agathon, questioned Abba Pimin, saying, How do the demons fight against me? Abba Pimin said to him, The demons fight against you? They do not fight against us at all, as long as we are doing our own will. For our own wills become the demons, and it is these which attack us in order that we may fulfill them. But if you want to see who the demons really fight against, it is against Moses and those who are like him. Abba Pimin said, God has given this way of life to Israel, to abstain from everything which is contrary to nature, that is to say, anger, fits of passion, jealousy, hatred, and slandering the brethren, in short, everything that is characteristic of the old man. A brother questioned Abba Pimin, saying, Give me a word. And he said to him, The fathers put compunction as the beginning of every action. The brother said again, Give me another word. The old man replied, As far as you can, do some manual work, so as to be able to give alms. For it is written that alms and faith purify from sin. The brother said, What is faith? The old man said, Faith is to live humbly and to give alms. A brother questioned Abba Pimin, saying, If I see a brother whom I have heard is a sinner, I do not want to take him into my cell. But when I see a good brother, I am happy to be with him. The old man said, 
If you do a little good to the good brother, do twice as much for the other, for he is sick. Now there was an anchorite called Timothy in a synobium. The abbot, having heard of a brother who was being tempted, asked Timothy about him, and the anchorite advised him to drive the brother away. Then when he had been driven away, the brother's temptation fell upon Timothy to the point where he was in danger. Then Timothy stood up before God and said, I have sinned, forgive me. Then a voice came which said to him, Timothy, the only reason I have done this to you is because you despised your brother in the time of his temptation.